Hey guys, welcome back to Gardening Young. Today is week 14, I believe, of our garden tour series. I am so excited that it is coming. Summer is coming to a close, which is crazy. Um, I'm about to start school up. Um, that's also crazy. Um, but um, everything is still doing amazing. Um, and I'm so excited to take you along and show you harvest a little on the way um, and without further ado let's just hop right into this video if you're new here my name's Anna Grace um, I grow in zone 7b in my small backyard garden um, I am so glad you are here um, if you're not new here welcome back um, I'm also glad that you are here um, and I can't wait to show you guys what's going on so grab your cup of coffee um, and let's just go get into this garden tour. Okay, so starting off um, on our raised bed on stilts, like a, as I like to call it, um, we have our sucker tomatoes that I have rooted and popped in this bed, and they're honestly just thriving, doing amazing. Um, I have decided to kind of um, make this my experiment. Um, uh, tomatoes where I am not supporting them at all I am just letting them grow um, and I just want to see I just want to show you guys how they grow naturally if I don't intervene at all so I'm just letting them grow you can see one over one over here is already um, like fallen over and so they're kind of supporting each other at the moment um, so I think that's really cool and I'm just gonna kind of let them grow see how they're doing they st uh, seem to not be affected by the herbicide even though I know I did put a thin layer of herbicide compost um, a thin layer of herbicide compost in here um, to um, in this bed so um, I but they don't seem to be affected at all all their foliage looks really really healthy so that's one of the things that I'm really really thankful for one of the things I'm realizing with this herbicide damage is that um, the beds that were only topped with the compost aren't doing as bad um, as the ones that were as the beds that were like solely that compost um so like for example all the in-ground beds um i had grown in them before and they i had already put down previous compost there was already existing soil there i was just amending with that with the herbicide dam with the compost um for you, those of you who are new here um earlier in the year i got a bag of compost that i amended everything with that was contaminated with herbicides so um that's to catch you up just realizing that my dogs got in here <clears throat> see how frustrating that is but how'd they get in oh dang okay guys so my dogs got into my garden so as we go along in this garden tour today we are going to be assessing the damage life with dogs and them tearing up your garden. All right, seems to be none of the plants are damaged, but there's some damage, so anyway, back on track. I have realized that the ones that had existing soil and were only amended with the compost are not doing nearly as bad as like my beds that I completely filled up with that compost. So like all my in-ground beds are doing like good they're only being a little bit affected just because there was existing soil and it was only topped with that compost so um, I think that's the um, deal here is they're really not being affected because there was only a thin layer of that herbicide damage compost um, that they're growing in so it's really um, a, not as much um, to um, really affect these plants um, which I'm extremely happy with um, but now let's just go into this garden and warning yes they have gotten in here and yes they have torn some things up so let's go assess this all right so walking in here you can see my fencing is all messed up I have to fix that um, you can see they have gotten into this and uh, and like spread it out all around here and then we have a cherry tomato that fell, another cherry tomato that fell. Um, that's fun. 
Um, you can see up there they dug a big hole. Um, and, um, hold on, let me show you this. So up here, they have torn down my fence and got in and dug this big hole. So I think that's the extent of, of the damage that they did. They dug a little bit right there. Um, but other than that, it's pretty, pretty fine. Um, so I'm happy that they didn't destroy any of the actual plants. All the actual plants are fine. But I am going to have to repair my fence. So, that's kind of annoying. Um, life with dogs, right? Let me know in the comments if any of you guys have trouble with dogs digging up your garden. Because it is a constant frustration. Um, because they constantly, even with the fence around my garden, find a way to get in. And it's, uh, it's one of the most frustrating things. So, um, aside from that, let's get into the actual garden tour and look at some plants. Okay, so starting with our cherry tomatoes, we have our sun gold tomatoes which are these lovely golden tomatoes which need to be harvested um but we absolutely love these cherry tomatoes they're super sweet um and one of our favorites um have been for a while they always do super duper well which is a plus um they don't give you a bunch of cherry tomatoes but um they do grow really well and i've always found found that as a plus um, and so you can see I have two plants here um, all of them doing really really good um, needing to be harvested um, one dropped I know that Let's see I can see one down here sometimes guys with your cherry tomatoes if they get too ripe or the stem dries up um, they will just drop um, that's like how they reproduce is they drop cherry tomatoes if you can find them um, when they have just dropped um, uh, you can still eat those like they're still fine just pick them up off the ground no, a little dirt never hurt anything um, and I still use those um, so there's a little tip but we love our sun golds one of our favorites we try to get them when they're really really dark dark orange like this because we find that they're the sweetest when they're like this so like if they're kind of lighter orange I tend to let them stay on the vine a little bit longer and then our next um, one is the berries crazy cherry um, tomato we the cherry tomato we have fell in love with this variety this year um, it produces a ton Hun. Um, the first time I've ever grown it and I absolutely love it. The only thing I will say with the Berry's Crazy Cherry is it produces a ton and I like that but um, the only thing about this tomato is it, I find that they're a little bit more tart um, even when they're at their peak um, they are a little bit more of a tart um, uh, flavor of a tomato than compared to the sun gold and I know the sun gold are just really really sweet but um, I have found that when it comes to flavor I prefer the sun gold but when it comes to production I prefer the um, berries crazy cherry so um, for now on in my garden I will make sure that I grow both of those so that you get the best of both worlds but um, that's just kind of what I think about whenever I'm picking varieties is okay um, I'll do a little bit of one for this reason and I'll do a little bit of one for another reason that's just kind of how I go about it so like for example I'm gonna go for the sun gold for their flavor and then the berries for the cherry for the production and you know you just get a bunch of cherry tomatoes that way um, and I just find that I get a bunch of a variety that I like out of doing that so um, yeah all right, so I need to harvest a little bit of these berries, crazy cherry. But um, if you've seen a few of my past videos, I have let this um, this tomato plant go and um, kind of support itself more on the arch trellis on the other side. So a bunch of the it is on the other side. So I'm not gonna harvest it over here. I'm gonna harvest it on the other side. Um, so we'll do that in a minute. But our last um, our last cherry tomato is the bloom cre blue cream berry, which I've really liked this cherry tomato. Um, it's like a little yellow tomato um, with a little blue shoulder. 
um, or a little purple shoulder. Um, we've really enjoyed these. Um, I haven't really gotten a whole lot of tasting out of them, um, but um, I am looking forward to um, tasting them. So this is one of them. Really, really cool. Um, I think that's super duper cool. They're really cool um, cherry tomatoes. It's the first time I've grown tomatoes with like a little blue shoulder. So that's been super cool. You can see how they are darker on the blue shoulder up here. But um, this one has done really, really well. I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to support it though. Because it's growing really tall and I don't have an arch trellis to like let it lean over to. So we'll figure out something with that. Um, here is the torn down fin, so I was going to try to go past this. Okay, so we need to harvest some berries, crazy cherry. So let me do that real quick. The other thing this week, too, is I found um, some yellow sun gold tomatoes that were split because we've been getting a lot of rain, so like, especially with cherry tomatoes, um, like yellow and orange ones, you'll find, even with red ones too, but um, these, the yellow and orange are more pr prone to it because they have thin skins, um, but I've just found that um, uh, they have been splitting, it's, when they split, it's because there's so much rain that the tomato just fills up with water that it just its little skin can't hold it and it splits Okay, now that we've harvested the cherry tomatoes, you can see I got a good little harvest there. Um, uh, the next thing is this art trellis. So we have our cucumbers, our muncher cucumbers doing amazing. You can see this one is like already um, taller than me, doing great. Um, I haven't gotten any cucumbers yet, so I'm hope I'm hoping we will. <gasps> I found a baby one. Look, ah, that's so. cute. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so um, I know that this has to be pollinated, so I'm kind of, um, I kind of think that I'm going to hand pollinate it. Um, so if you don't know how to do that, you just take a male flower, which is one's, um, you know if it's a male flower because um, it, you'll have a little simple stem, and then female flowers will have the little baby cucumber on it. So um, you just take a male flower, and you take the inside of it, and rub it inside the female flower, and that pollinates it. So I think I'm going to do that once I finish this, um, this up. Um, but I'm really excited to see that we are getting some female flowers because we've just had a bunch of male flowers and no female, but that's our first female that I've seen, which is super duper exciting. Um, that means we get cucumbers and honestly, these cucumbers I planted later, um, and they haven't really been affected by the heat and I'm so happy about that. Um, so they're doing amazing as you can see. And then our beans. So. I wanted to pull these out before um, I film this, but I see a bunch that need to be harvested. So I think I'm gonna get one last little harvest off of these, and these are going to get pulled out today. Um, and then I need to, I definitely need to put in another round of beans so that I can keep getting a harvest from them. So that's what's in there. Then in our big bed, um, I planted some zucchini, um, super exciting. So this is the zucchini black beauty, I believe. And I planted another one over there with that marker is. Never came up, so it's okay. Um, and then over here, we have a, I think these two, I believe, are Ford hook zucchinis. Um, doing awesome. 
um, and then this, this, and that one were supposed to be, this are, um, the, this, uh, these are the, your regular, like, straight neck squash, um, and then this is another, um, Black Beauty zucchini, so, all doing really well, I'm trying to get a late harvest of them, um, and that's super exciting, then we have some cinnamon basil doing amazing, and in the back portion of our bed, we have an early jalapeno pepper, and it looks like one fell, um, so I get to harvest that, that's super exciting, um, but you can see they're like little jalapenos, and I love it, that's so cool, this is my first jalapeno, um, but you can see it has a few on here. Um, doing super well, and then we have our zinnias. This is our polar bear and pink senorita. Senorita, um, I don't remember how to say it, um, but you can see they're just beautiful. And then I have another exciting thing to show you, but this is the pink senorita. Absolutely beautiful. I have been loving these petals. Um, one of my favorites. And then the exciting thing that I really wanted to show you is our sunflower bloomed this week so you can see that is just beautiful I love it it's so happy and I've just been adoring it it's so pretty um, I love the petals oh my gosh so pretty so I've been loving the flowers this year definitely I've been loving the flowers this year definitely one of my the first times that I've um, really been um, vigilant in making sure that I had flowers like zinnias and sunflowers and I'm so glad that I did because I absolutely love them they brighten my day every time I see something new has bloomed um, so that's super exciting and I'm so excited that I got to share that um, with you guys Okay, then here in our pepper bed, we have our fish pepper, which this one actually has a little baby pepper. I don't know if you can see right there, um, but that's cool. That thing is huge. Um, then we have our big ones over here. Um, I think I have a banana pepper. Dang it! Okay, I see my banana pepper. My banana peppers have been attacked by bugs every single time I find them. Look! That's so frustrating. I, all my banana peppers have got, been gotten by bugs. And now there's water coming out of it. What the heck? So that gets composted um, because I don't have anything to use it for. But that's so frustrating. Um, if you guys have any tips on how to make sure that your banana peppers don't get eaten, um, let me know because every single time something gets to it. So now that goes into the compost because I can't use it. So that's my frustration with my banana peppers. Then we have our two bell peppers. And actually, the one in the middle that was looking really, really bad. Oh, wait, never mind. It still looks bad. Um, but we have our two banana peppers doing good. And then our big bell pepper. I haven't seen any, um, any baby bell peppers on this at all this year so I'm wondering if it'll produce anything or if it's just gonna grow huge but um, hopefully it'll get to start producing soon um, but that's kind of the pepper bed okay so now that we've seen everything in the big garden let's go over to our pots and look at all those things okay so over here um, we have all of our pots um, or at least most of them. So we have some lemon basil that needs to be harvested, um, a polka dot plant, um, this used to be thyme, and a vinca vine. This is um, actually um, the tears of my green stock that whenever we restained our deck, we put them here, and um, I have not gotten to um, putting them back on the deck or tearing up my green stock. So I've just left them, um, but everything's doing really, really good. We have some Alaska mixed nasturtium, um, another vinca vine, a big polka dot plant, um, another polka dot plant, a bunch of weeds in here I need to get in here and pull out. Um, we have a lettuce leaf basil, um, which is one that gets really big leaves, but we don't have any really big leaves right now. Um, over here, 
we have some parsley. Um, my parsley has done amazing this year. Just absolutely gotten gone gi gotten gigantic, um, which I'm super happy about. This is a shishito pepper, um, and it's absolutely just been crazy with production this year. You can see this is only one plant, but it's absolutely covered in peppers, which I am so happy with. I need to harvest a few of these, like this one and some ones back there. Um, we have another lemon basil, um, some marigolds. My marigolds in my containers have also done amazing. We have a dahlia plant, um, a purple dahlia plant. Um, that is beautiful. Over in here we have a um, some more marigolds. This was a nasturtium plant that is going crazy. Um, I think some of the heat and humidity is kind of getting to it. You can see this is also it. Um, another huge parsley plant you can see. It's just massive. And then over there we have a vinca vine and right here we have your classic Genovese basil. And then back on the back, we have two polka dot plants doing great. And we can't forget about our little loner over here. This is a dahlia plant that my dogs got into, but um, and it never got put back on the deck. And it's doing pretty good. Um, no, it's not doing as good. It died off into twigs. Um, but I see a little bit of green growth coming back. Um, I'm just going to leave it in the ground, honestly. Um, keep the soil in the right place and maybe it'll come back next year. I just, I have high hopes for this and I'm just going to leave it there and see if it does anything. And then we haven't been over here in a while since it's been stained. Um, but I do have plants over here um, and I wanted to show you guys them. Um, so this is the top tier of my green stock. And it has oregano in it, um, absolutely going crazy, um, doing amazing. And then this polka dot plant, I mean, come on, that thing is huge. Look how big that plant is. So it has, like, I think that's just amazing how well it's done. Um, it's just massive now. And the oregano, um, like, sending off shoots, <laughs> like, it's just, like, filling out into another tier so it's doing amazing so that's really good. I hope you guys enjoyed this garden tour looking at everything. Um, I think this will kind of be um, the one of the last garden tours um, of the season because it they are is the gardens honestly kind of wrapping up. Um, you know, it's kind of getting to the end of the season. I'm going to be starting sport here soon, um, starting school, all those good things. But um, that does not mean that it is going to be the end of the garden tours. Um, I'll probably take it through um, August, um, and then we will have fall things going in. And I'm going to be, I'm so excited for that. Um, I'll probably have one big day where we tear out some of the fall stuff, and I will make sure that I take you guys along with along with me um, but it is crazy that it's we're wrapping up kind of the season um, and I'm so excited for the next things to come the next seasons I'm so glad that you guys could come with me um, on this whole journey make sure you like comment subscribe all those good things and I'll see you next time bye